Let's get physical, it's Jordan here, back in with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the third week of October, October 18th until the 22nd, Monday to Friday. We've got retail, we've got low prints, we've got imports, and of course, our community spotlight. Now, before we get into it, I just want to say that, you know, growth has been a little slow this past year in terms of the channel as a whole. Not the series, the series is doing great, but to liven things up for the channel as a whole, when we get to 100,000 subscribers, we are going to be giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED model. Yeah, I know that's kind of a long way off, but you know, we want to speed up the process just a little bit. And so yeah, if you're subscribed, then great. If you're not subscribed, because I know at least like 30% of you who watch this show are not subscribed. Uh, so yeah, subscribe because then you can win a Switch OLED and we can also get to that point quicker. And also another thing, when we get to 100k, I am going to be getting a tattoo of a Steambok. Yes, I will. Subscribe! Caligula Effect 2 is releasing this week thanks to NIS America. This is an RPG, a slightly budgeted Persona style game. Is it a cheap copy or is it an homage? Well, the original game was supposed to be kind of a little bit rough around the edges, shall we say. I've always been interested in picking up, but I heard it wasn't the greatest RPG ever. And who knows with this sequel. Hopefully they've smoothed a lot of the rough edges out of the original and hopefully it runs better on the Switch. Still, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that RPG fans will get a kick out of this. Do let us know in the comments if you pick it up. Sadly, I won't have time for a review because for some reason, time seems to be moving faster than it used to. And our executive producers Michael Del Polito, Thorn Metal Luna, Jonathan Rumor, God of Resin, Alexander Cato, they've chosen this as their pick of the week. Dying Light Platinum Edition should be releasing physically this week. This is the fullest version of the game yet and the first time on the Switch. An open world zombie survival game. This contains tons of DLC plus special features for the Switch version including HD rumble, touchscreen support and motion controls. There's online and local wireless play so you and your friends can try and survive together. This looks like a badass game and even though I'm not massively into my like my big budget open world stuff, I am interested. The trailer that does show the Switch footage looks decently impressive and fingers crossed the frame rate can hold its own too. You do have to worry about these types of games though so let's wait until the reviews drop before buying it. And our executive producers Velos, Boombox and Robotech, they've chosen this as their pick of the week. Six in one. Time Management Game Collection is just mwah, magnificent. I love a cheeky shovelware title, especially ones with painfully bad box art. They are my favorite. And this is the king. The only way this could be improved upon if it was like a code in a box. Or maybe six codes in a box, that would be ultimate collector's piece for me. Colossus Down, I hate mentioning games I've mentioned already, but I think, I think Europe uh, this week you may actually get this release. Uh, as I mentioned back in the video a few weeks ago, I don't get too hung up about being wrong as that would drive me absolutely insane. So yeah, maybe Europe you're getting this physical in a standard and mini collector's edition. Keep an eye out for it. My friend Peppa Pig is releasing this week. This is a licensed tie-in from the Absolute Kings Outright Games. I mean, mostly their games look serviceable, if a bit Yankee on the Switch. I think we can all agree my friend Peppa Pig is going to push the Switch to its absolute limits. We're all begging for a pro at this point. Look, I've got to be fair, this just looks like an episode of the TV show, which is pretty bang on. What the actual gameplay is, I have no idea. I don't know where the interaction is here, but they've nailed the license, except for one thing. I mean, I must admit, it's been a while since I've binge-watched Peppa Pig, you know? You know, I'm slacking in, in that department, but these are not the voices that I remember. I think they've not licensed the voices, or they've not paid the voice actors to voice the characters. They've got some, like, copy jobs. I mean, how can you replace George Pig? Dinosaur. I can't... Mm -hmm. Disrespectful. Anyways, I may get this for my daughter. And our executive producer J Cross 7776 is being deadly serious with this as his pick of the week. Doki Doki Literature Club Plus might be releasing in some places in Europe this week. Amazon UK has it down for this week, but other European countries have pushed it till November, so we'll see about that. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to mention this game again. Even though it's great, I've mentioned it enough times. And also the Team Sonic Racing re-release that comes with an art book may be out in Europe this week. I've mentioned this before as well. Yeah, whatever. 
And maybe, just maybe, Gris is releasing at retail this week. The date keeps getting pushed back since I first mentioned it, so sorry, I can't really do much about delays. I can only go on what websites tell me at the time of writing. Are you ready? It's that time of the week again. It is Code in a Box Bullshit. And we've got some real Match 3 Adventure Collection for all your Facebook gaming needs. Speed 3 Grand Prix, let's think of another rhymesy. Mickey Storm and the Curse Master, license tie-in that forgot to, like, get a license for something. Endless Puzzle, fun collection. Is it actually endless, or do they think nobody will bother to check? Animal Car Racer, because there's just not enough awful car racers to go around. And that concludes this week's Code in a Box Boom! Also, by the way, I forgot to say, you remember that Lego superhero thing that completely befuddled me? Uh, well, apparently that, that release is actually a code in a box, which was never mentioned when I was researching the episode until after the episode came out, or at least like almost the same time. Then they changed the picture to show it was an actual code in a box, and the listing, it was a code in a box. So yeah, it's not a real physical cartridge. It is, in fact, bullshit. Alright, the Low Prince Supra Land is getting put up for pre-order by Limited Run Games. This is supposed to be a first-person Metroidvania puzzle game. Lots of exploration, lots of puzzle solving, mixed in with some Quake-style combat. This was overwhelmingly well-received with its PC release, although it doesn't look quite so great on the Nintendo Switch. So maybe it's not the best way to play this fine game, but still a nice option if graphics aren't a big deal. If you enjoy going about your business, no hand-holding and discovering new things, Things, it could be a rather nice one for you, and you can order this on the 19th. Fatal 12 is getting a distribution effort from Limited Run. This is a straight visual novel where you have 12 days to undo the fatal outcome of your life. This is a fairly highly rated visual novel being published in the West by the prolific Sekai Project, and one to look out for visual novel fans. There's not too much in terms of choice from what I've heard, it's pretty direct, but a good story nonetheless. I asked Sekai about a potentially wider release, maybe at retail or for Europe, but at the time of writing they did not reply to me. There is a standard edition and a collector's edition that comes with some decent goodies, absolutely tat free believe it or not. You can pre-order this on October 19th as well. And our executive producers, Parsnip Coffee, Brent McLean, Cartoon Soren, they've chosen this as their pick of the week. You can pre-order Cotton Guardian 4 Saturn Tribute from Strictly Limited right now. We all knew this was coming, we just did not know when. Well, now it's available to pre-order in a standard edition or a collector's edition. As always, the collector's edition includes loads of stuff, which is probably why it takes them over a year to send the games out. So yeah, see you Christmas 2022, probably, if you order this. To be fair, it looks decent enough and more reasonably priced than if Limited Run did this kind of collector's edition. Or there is the Japanese or Asian versions available right now from Play Asia. Links are below for those if you don't want to wait a whole year to get these three really great shooters. And yes, apparently there is input lag, but I did not notice it and I really enjoyed it. You know, sue me. And our executive producer Punky Deuce has chosen this as his pick of the week. Alright, let's head into the imports. Remember, we have our discount code and the links below, but to be honest, there is not really that much going on this week. We have Archetype Arcadia, which does not have English. We have Blue Reflection Second Light, there's no English, but we're getting this in the West pretty soon, I believe. Hunt Down looks to be getting a slightly earlier release in Asia. The Western release is out next week, I think. Alright, the community spotlight now. This month, I'm going to be giving away a double helping of the Wanderer and Super Mash Collector's Edition. Yep, both together. Thanks to Kosen for providing them to give away to you guys. And by the way, I got something in this week. You remember I reviewed Lyrica 2? Well, I got in the Collector's Edition, which I also mentioned. So this is actually a double pack of Lyrica 1 and Lyrica 2. So it's two games in one. I can vouch for the second game being fantastic. A great rhythm game, really nice music, very chill, accessible, but also a challenge. I reviewed it very highly for what it was. Check it out if you didn't see it. So I had to get the Collector's Edition, mainly due to the soundtrack CD. Here you get two CDs, 29 songs from the Collective Games, two hours worth of music. And it's great. It has a nice variety. Sadly, it does not have my favorite song from the game, but hey, you know, you can't win everything. 
this is presented rather nicely. I've already burned the songs to my computer and my phone to listen to. Unexpectedly, this collector's edition includes what I think are guitar picks. Yeah, I sound like an idiot since I do actually play the guitar, but I've never seen one like these styles before. One of them kind of looks like a bass pick, but these are not my usual style, but I may use the bigger one to pretend I'm a member of Green Day like I do once a week. There's also a digital art book on the back of the paper, don't lose this, it ain't just a flyer. And of course you get the game that plays in English. This is available in a standard edition as well if you're a heathen and you don't want the music CD. I'm joking of course. Links are below for both versions with our discount code SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out for 5% off this item. Highly recommended honestly if you enjoy rhythm games. There is one thing I always forget to mention with the coast and stuff. I really wish the collector's edition's outer box was made of, uh, shall we say, sturdier stuff. I've got most of their releases and I've accidentally dinted one of them and slightly torn two of them. You know, please handle these with care if perfection is important to you. Thankfully, I, I don't really care. Alright, on to you lot. Our executive producer Robo Tech showed off the rest of his recent pickups, showing up some really expensive releases these days such as the Bayonetta Japanese Collector's Edition and Ikaruga. Why did this have to be so limited? Tiroth sent in this photo of some pickups, some nice imports. Remember, Capcom hates Europe, so if you want that Ace Attorney game, you're gonna have to import it from Japan or America. Executive producer God of Resin, thanks for the double support by using our Play Age links on some of these. Nice to see Ultra Age there, a fun if brief game. Check out my review if you haven't seen it already. James Dunn sent in this photo of some pickups, a couple of red art releases there, two I recommend in my video of top 10. Andrew Spinella sent in this photo of some cool releases. Hellpoint is a bit of a budget release, but I'm interested in trying it myself. Executive producer Cartoon Soren picked up these, including the Monster Boy Collector's Edition, which looks really good. I'd be tempted for the soundtrack alone. Napoleon was one of many to show off their Big Daddy Metroid this week, very jealous indeed. Executive producer Alyssa sent in this photo of Buster Fellows and Astral Chain. I actually heard that the CE of Buster Fellows had a few more stock added to Fun Stock's website where they sold it, although it was a few days ago, so maybe it sold out again, I don't know. Tap and Nap, thanks for using our links and code to pick up Witch Spring 3. Must have been a while ago since sadly I don't think they have any of the early bird goodies anymore. Pity since it's a lovely little package and was very reasonably priced as well. Executive producer Thorn Metal Luna sent in this photo showing off some recent games. If you didn't hear, Limited Room will be exclusively distributing Crisis 2 and 3 in the coming weeks, and look forward to a mini rant about that when the time comes. Jupa, thanks for using our links and codes on some of these games. A mix of visual novel and RPG imports, all highly recommended. Thank you for your support. Craid lived up to his name with this picture, a very Metroid heavy theme, I love it. Transient Image, thanks for using our links and code and picking up some of these. Metallic Child, an epic win, I'm so happy to see a lot of people agree with my quite positive review of it. Yusha sent in this photo of their recent pickups, a couple of super rare games. I do wonder what their next game is going to be, I honestly don't know, but it's something to do with the dog. They picked up these games, wonderful to see the schlockiest of schlockfest, Fight of Animals Arena, import exclusive with English, remember, pick it up, links below. Executive producer Brent McLean picked up the fantastic Children of Mortar with a good old vinyl to go with it, the soundtrack is great on this one. Z picked up some fantastic imports this week, I'm seeing the beautiful Romancing Saga 3 release more and more which makes me a very happy bunny, I love it. Pacer picked up the European exclusive Do Not Feed the Monkeys. As a reminder, I don't mention Badland Games since they literally don't care about telling people when their games are releasing, so it makes my life really difficult. Anyways, that cover art must have taken ages to design. Marcos Blanco, thanks for using our links and codes on some of these games. Get playing that Legend of Mana remake immediately, I absolutely love that game. Rosona picked up the Asian release of Grandia, the double pack fantastic play Asia should be getting more in stock this week, just hold tight. Rene Boucher sent in the mythical seabed. Don't miss out on this one guys, once they're gone, they're gone and this is taking forever to get out. Long Drive sent in this picture of a double helping of Switch OLEDs. I'll take the white one please, uh, I'll DM you my address. J Clown sent in this photo of two fun games. 
I actually quite like that River City artwork. I think the Asian tops it just a little bit though. Solid Giamara paid top dollar for Limited Run's Collector's Edition of Clanad. Best visual novel ever, some would say. Executive producer Santa Tartaruga picked up the white switch OLED. I'm so jealous. I'm We're giving one away. That's why I don't have one myself. Dame Fortuna sent in the Asian version of No More Heroes 1 and 2 Double Pack. Brilliant, great value there, and I think Play Asia should be getting more stock later this week too, so hold tight for that. Links are below. All right, let's have a roundup because we've had a lot of pictures this week. Carlos Ramirez, Gunmetal Otaku, Fluttershout, McLaren, Visipon, Dead Tech, Kiel, Irina, Stephen Domit, Bryson Coldwell, Lars, JP, My Pal Dragon, Grinning Wolf Gaming, Rick Crowbert, Chris Stade, Brian, Evil McLeod, Hudo, Panzer Thief Zero, Needless Dragon, Stewie, Sheng Long, Art Phoenix Assortis, Cookie Cory, Starby, Merciless Switch Collector, Ashura G, Switchback, Zone 7, Shadow 007, Shik Shall Shell, Radio to Rancid, Jim, Sosha. All right, please send me pictures on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or tag me in a post and use the hashtag Let's Get Physical. We have an email address, switchwatchspotlight at gmail.com. And we have a Discord, which is a nice way for us to have a chat with you guys. And you can send your pictures there in the submissions section. The Discord server link is below. Please just send me one picture per week. If you've got lots of pictures, you can put them in like a collage. That, that really helps. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physical. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brett McLean, Jonathan Rumo, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, J Cross7776, Elisa, Punky Dooster, Michael Del Polito, Cartoon Soren, Jack Severos, Velos, Robotech Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, and Parsnip Coffee. Thank you for your amazing support. Plus you, yes you, watching right now. If you watch all the way through, you are a massive legend, and I want you to leave a pepper and a pig emoji in the comments so I know who the legends are because you are the legends of Peppa Pig. Check out some of our other stuff. We've got, uh, well, you know the physical series. We've got Bargains on Sunday. Uh, we didn't have any recent, re oh, we had Disco Elysium review, of course. And also check out our other channel if you into some, uh, some PS5 and Xbox content as well. See you guys over there. Have a good one.